guys and welcome to Top Table Gaming. I'm Top Table Steve and I'm joined today again by Mr Tommy Sewell. Um, we are going to be looking at the entries into the painting competition. Yes we are. Which is very exciting. Um, it's had a really good response. I'm surprised. I'm surprised. That I didn't think many people would uh, get on it but yeah it's been really really good. It must be your name that's involved in it Tommy. Oh you're a pretty good, pretty cool guy. <laughs> so. you know. But there's been, we've had Lord of the Rings stuff, we've had 40k stuff, Necromunda stuff, some yeah. miscellaneous. I was going to say, yeah, we've had stuff that kind of uh, stays within the spirit of fun, but yeah. not within the factual boundaries yeah, of, yeah, the, yeah. of the competition. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we've had a couple so, yeah. of tanks that tried to sneak in, but I had to put a stop to that. So I think, uh, without further ado, we'll get looking at some of the entries that interest think, you the most. I think we should. Yeah, cool. yeah. Oh, bear in mind though, I have to say, they say it interests me the most. Um, though that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to the get, yeah, they're gonna yeah, yeah, get yeah. any kind of advantage. They've just caught your you eye on this stage. Yeah, it's just what makes me giddy. But you know, the yeah. projects at the end might be a, might be amazing. Might blow so, socks off. Yeah, correct. Or not? Or not? <laughs> oh, or somebody might take a model I love and just kill it. Yeah. <laughs> so, Talking so. to you, Mr. Benjamin Bowles. All right. Okay. Well, I've got a culprit. <laughs> have one. Right. Let's go and have a look. All right. So first up, we'll have a look at Colm Brown's entry. This was yeah. the first entry, this. Yeah. It's caught your eye it straight is, away. It, yeah, it's caught my eye straight away. Mainly, firstly, because it was Necromunda. Mm -hmm. and secondly, I thought it would be uh, not what it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's, it's, it's an, an odd model. It's probably the oddest model Games Workshop I've ever made <laughs> um, on, in uh, on closer inspection. We kind of deciphered it's like a, it's, it's a floating brain, isn't it? Yeah. Really? A fleshy, with, mechanical yeah, thing. With, with robot arms dangling down. Yeah. It's certainly a strange choice of model. It's like so, a Hellraiser. Yeah, all right, yeah, like okay, yeah. Some of them, one of them weird monsters that yeah, chase yeah. that girl at the yeah. end. Yeah. <laughs> no, the thing you're yeah. All right, yeah, okay. Well, that's funky. So it's so basically a lot of flesh, it looks mm -hmm. like. Yeah, well, i tell you what I'm interested in. I'm going to give this person some heads up, and obviously anyone else doing a model like this. Yeah. Um, can obviously take this tip. I'm not a fan of flying stands, mm. and I don't think I ever will be. No. All right. So even if the I like them less if they're clear. Yeah. I like them a little bit more if they're black. Mm. But if you can substitute it for say like a, a rotten cable or a, or a broken girder, like yeah, it's yeah. just passing it's over just an passing object, past it, yeah. and then it becomes part of the scene. Yeah. You know, and these things like this are easy to do. Yeah, because you know. even though it's a clear, them clear flying bases, it's obvious you can see it. Yeah, and just they're doing it, the best that they can do by giving you something. But yeah, yeah I know what you mean. Well, it, it destroys the illusion. That's the first step. And the, the the other thing is, is these things are brittle. You yeah. know, so if you ever had the ends just snap yeah, at yeah. either end, and then what have you got to do? You've still got to drill down and mm. pin it anyway. And even then, you might create a splinter off the yeah, side. Yeah. So just practicality and aesthetics. Flying mm -hmm. stands are a no no. So there's a tip for you, Colin. Let's see what you can for do, everyone. pal. Yeah, let's see what you can do. So if you've got any flying objects, have them on like some weird, like tw twisted tree, a bit of girder, or a load of cables, yeah. or just something, and just have like the tip of it passing by. Mm -hmm. So there you go. That'd be cool. Top tip. Yeah. Okay, let's have a look at the next one. Okay, so next up we have friend of the channel, Mr. Gaz Baller. Um, he has chose to paint an Aragorn, an old school Aragorn, one of my favourites. Alright, so I was trying to decide if it was a, a Brian Nelson sculpt, I can't quite remember or mm -hmm. not. But either way, the reason I like the Aragorn figure is because generally I like a quite understated, simple figure. Yeah. And Aragorn is it. And there's lots of opportunity on Aragorn to do a nice face. Yeah. Can you make him look like Aragorn? The old Lord of Rings sculpts were like, they're better than the a lot by of Brian Nelson yeah, and the original they were awesome. ones. Yeah. I, I'm not sure if I don't think that's the weather top one because I think he's got no. A, no, he's not. He's got a fiery brown yeah. one, hasn't he? Yeah. So either way, Aragorn has got opportunities for lovely cloth. He's got opportunities for lovely metallics mm -hmm. and opportunities for lovely skin. Yeah. And you know, there's a bit of everything on there, and just a nice, simple base for that. Yeah. Top. Yeah, that'd be cool. So, Gaz, crack on, lad. All right, we'll move on. Yeah. Well. Okay, so the next one that's caught. Tommy's eye is from Matthew Mountain and it's is that malign portents? It is, it's the fungoid cave shaman. It's mm. Nazgar stink mullet. That's um, a name. It certainly is. I know some of them. I was gonna say I've let a few of them go if I'm honest. <laughs> Alright, so uh 
Is he like a shaman? Is he? He's is a that shaman. Thing? He's got like mushrooms growing out of his head, and, and ah, that's the interesting right. thing because for me, this this model is actually quite busy mm -hmm. because his face isn't just a simple face. He's got all sorts of accoutrement on his face mm -hmm. as well as all sorts of things and sticking out the top of him and out of his head and on his stick. You know, it's easy for a model like that to to become over complicated because yeah. like right now, looking at the screen. Can you really pick out his face or his eyes no, or anything like no. that? So it'd be really interesting to see how he deals with that yeah. while making something interesting for the mushroom on his head. Yeah. Because if you make it too interesting, well, you're not looking at him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? So you've got to find a way to make this cool. Yeah. But look at him. Yeah. I took I took on board some of the stuff you said last time about like faces and bases. Yeah, man. And um, try and sort of put a little bit more effort into the face because I've just done a lot of space marines. Yeah. The ones that are uh, unhelmeted in the faces. Yeah. And it sort of yeah takes your eye away from if you've cut a few corners, basically, in my case, anyway. Yeah. On the rest of the model. Um, yeah. It, it's interesting. You, you can play mind games with people if you know how to construct a model. Yeah. Uh, um, and you can kind of direct them to look at the things you want them to look at mm. and avoid the things you don't want them to look yeah. at. It's a little bit of time and experience that, but mm. um, the other cool thing about this model is it already has a base ready to go, so just paint it well. Ah, so it's already got a, yeah. a, a busy base, yeah. nice. Right, it's well, ready to go. Matthew, crack on with that one, and I look forward to seeing your whip picks. Oh, yeah. Okay, so the next one we're going to look at is from Christian Woodward. Um, this is from a system, I don't recognise this. No, I don't recognise it either, but it's, oh. unless it's a model of me. <laughs> he has got a baldy head. <laughs> but no, it's an interesting model. It is an interesting model. Two things interest me is the has it been converted in any way? Yeah. Because I can see the shovel head has had a, a rod yeah. um, stuck in it. I can't tell from the picture if any of it's been green stuffed as well. You don't think it has? I don't think it has, but the the, the right hand yeah. looks glove, looks like it could. It, it, the colour of the hand doesn't match the arm, so I'm yeah, thinking yeah, it's yeah. that from a different model. Yeah, yeah. Um, which, if it is, that's great. Conversion's yeah, fantastic. And yeah. um, we can see that you've called an undertaker from yeah. um, your writing well, on the that's, pad. That's the big interesting bit for me is the fact that you've planned the colour scheme. I can see what it is. I can mm. see what you mean. And now it'd be very interesting to see how you execute things like similar to dog. Yeah. The gilet. Mm. Should men ever really use a word like that? It's, it's a body warmer. <laughs> it's a isn't gillet. It? It's a gillet. Yeah. It's a gillet <laughs> or a body warmer. But yeah, it says similar to dog. Yeah. I don't know if your dog wears a gillet. You know, like one of the tartan ones that a Scotty dog will wear. A barber gillet yeah. on dog. Oh, you're actually going to do some kind of dog skin. What yeah. kind of dog skin? So that'd yeah, yeah that would be interesting. And show us the dog. Yeah, see the dog. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm yeah. interested in the dog. Um, and let us know what system this is from, or if it's just maybe for a diorama or model. Yeah, yeah, just you wanted to paint it for fun. Uh, we'd be interested to know, Christian. So if you need some uh, face painting inspiration, I'll try. And... <laughs> there you go. That'll do. What's it called? Uh, zenithal lighting. Zenithal light. Yeah, 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 yeah. Zenithal yeah. So that's for free. You get that for free. Um, right. Thank you for that, Christian. I look forward to seeing what you do with it, and we'll move Cheers, on to the next one. Okay, um, I couldn't pass this set from Joe Holzman without stopping on it and having yeah, a chat about I, it. Yeah, I was trying to get further down the list because I know <laughs> we've just slid on the top five. And I said no, yeah. no. <laughs> so Joe says he's going to paint one off or maybe the two from the <clears> new Forge World Thorin versus Azog. Yeah, well that's interesting because it is a battle scene, yet yeah, we're only doing the 25 mil. Yeah. Um, single miniature base so which one are you going to do it depends on what kind of challenges do you want mm -hmm. because Azog's a nice light colour loads of flesh um, and it's quite a large model yeah um, the eye space is going to bring up some challenges is for example can you make it translucent can you paint the effect of depth that's mm. the one yeah you know that would be interesting yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. You know, to see if you if you've got the skills to pull it off. Mm -hmm. um, I know there was someone who got this, and they were talking about it in the uh, Great British Hobbit League Facebook group a few months ago. I think he was from Denmark. Yeah, and a bit naughty. You shouldn't really do that. But he said he was going to recast the base da, da, da. in clear blue resin. All right. Okay. Yeah. I see. I see. And yes, then add, add yeah, snow to yeah, it, things yeah. which would be awesome. And obviously, if you're doing it for your own personal use, great. But you know. I was judging at Salute this week and one of the models actually had a base 
like that that had been painted mm. um, and painted as if there was skulls deep in the ah, ice. Yeah. And it wasn't see-through. It, yeah. it hadn't been built up with water effect or any kind just of resin effect. It. it was just literally a picture of skulls embedded deep in ice at different levels at different angles. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Uh, and it, like, it really was awesome. Yeah, yeah. Like, it was. Yeah. Oh, that'd so, be good. That'd be so, so there's a challenge for you, Joe. <laughs> I mean, you don't you don't have to do it. You know, you don't have to do it. Um, but it'd be amazing if you yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. I, I I painted my, my version of these already. I really enjoyed painting them. I really struggled with Azog. It's a lot of light flesh. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the time, you paint just face and stuff. You can kind of get away with murder because yeah, yeah, it's such yeah. a small space. But because yeah. on him, uh, I mean, I'm happy with how it turned out. To to my skill level, it's probably as as I could it, I thought I've just noticed as well. That you actually composed this picture. You've got all your brushes set out. Like yeah, he's ready like to that. go. Yeah, he's yeah, ready yeah. to go. He's, he's keen. It. He's biting at the bit. Yeah. So yeah, make sure you get your whip picks up, Joe. And uh, yeah, we'll have a look at these skulls in the ass. <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. Um, oh. Right, let's move on. Okay, so next up we have, uh, which I think is a Chaos Marine uh, from Nathan Ward over in Yorkshire. Mm -hmm. uh, he's actually posted the finished pick. I'm assuming he's going to dig him out of the box. All right, or, yeah, I'll tell you what. If or he was going to go that. off and buy him. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so interesting choice. Quite a difficult one. Uh, if you are nice and neat and crisp mm. um so nice and neat with your base coats and crisp with your highlights you'll pull that off nicely yeah. um especially if you do that paint job if you start trying to get too clever with such things or you're a little bit scruffy mm. um that model could suffer a little bit yeah i, I mean as could any model yeah 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 you know yeah. but but um it I is a cool it, model it is a cool model very mm. much you took the words out of my mouth then uh, and there's lots of interesting things to look at there's loads going on. Um, it's, <laughs> There's I mean, loads. It's, it's the, it's the long-awaited Chaos Space Marine update. So, mm. you know, they've, they've knocked out all the park games workshop with those. So, um, I like yeah, I, I think so as well. And again, just a, a nice, simple, simply, uh, simple base with nicely executed paintwork on it, mm. like it's already got, yeah. would be just enough. Yeah. You know, anything else, I'd still keep it simple. Because mm. that model is, is, is a little bit of a show in, in himself. Yeah, it's a, show, a basic it's a show off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. even though he is a basic curse warrior, cur yeah. not curse warrior, curse space maybe. Um, mm. Yeah, he's, he's cool enough. He is, he's awesome. So uh, good luck with that, Nathan, and make sure we get a work in progress pick very, very soon. Yeah, send us one of him unmade. Yeah. Or unpainted. No cheating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So next up we have Sean Skullmunch Jago. How are you doing, Sean? And he is painting Magor from the Magor Fiends Underworld Warband. We think Magor is the one with the uh, the scully axe. Yeah. And the uh, small scully head. Yeah. Kind of like that. Although they all look cool. They do all look pretty yeah. cool. And if I'm honest, uh, flesh hounds are awesome. Yeah. I think the most awesome thing about corn, I think. Mm. You know, but you're not going to paint one of them. At least not for this, anyway. But no. if you do paint one of them, it'd be nice yeah, to see it. Yeah, so have it in the background. We'll have to have a look at it. And again, already got the pre-sculpted bases. Yep. Which so is going to be a help. Yep. Yeah. Um, so good luck with that, Sean. And we look forward to seeing your whip picks. Yeah. Okay, next up we have a friend of the channel. A good friend of mine. Is it? Mr. James Collard. Very cool. talented young man. Have I met him? Uh, I don't think so. Oh, okay. I don't think so. He's a fan of yours, though. Um, Thank you. He's chose uh, a model which I didn't expect him to choose. I thought he was going to go with a Space Marine or something <coughs> Lord of the Rings because that tends to be what he paints. Oh. He paints very neat Space Marines. Well, it's interesting because I've seen a few of his pictures already. I can't remember if it's on Instagram or just mm. on this group. Um, but watching the paint job come together has been uh, nice. Yeah. Because the colours are nice, colours are neat. Yeah. Um, not necessarily my choice in colour for his uh, trouser things, whatever they are, yeah. you know, because um, that blue is real strong yeah. and it makes you think blue more than skin. Right. So you need to do some of his skin to pull, pull your eye up to his face, mm -hmm. you know. So in other words, the, the way the model's composed at the moment, you know, the blue is the feature. Yeah. You want the blue to frame the feature, which is always him. Yeah. Um, but it's nicely executed. It's a cool we'll model. We'll see where it goes. Mm, it's yeah, a cool yeah. model. I'm not Absolutely. sure what it's from. I don't know if it rings any bells. No, yet. I haven't got a clue. Yeah, I think he said he, 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 I 
can't remember if he said he won it as part of another painting oh, competition right, cool. yeah, okay. uh, somewhere and he's had it lying around for ages and he designed it. It is a cool model, really nice. Um, so yeah, we look forward to seeing more whip picks, James. I know you've posted a few already, but we'll talk about them in the next well, video. Here's a tip for anybody who, who, who when, when you're trying to look at um, where the focal point of a, a model is, it's easy to get stuck in your opinion on where it is. And it's easy to not have a clue where it is. And you've kind of just got to allow your eye. And it takes practice. Mm. And you just start noticing where your eye is just pulled more. What you keep looking at more. Yeah. Your eye will always dart around the model. And when you start to put your finger on where your eye is actually drawn more. And don't settle for your first answer either. Because yeah. you know. right. this, this is how I've looked at, at, at yours. So then when you identify areas that are pulling the eye more. There's two ways of, of dealing with it. Well, there's, there's more than two ways, but I'm going to give you two. Um, knock the thing that's pulling your eye back a bit, and options for knocking his trousers back are putting um, weathering on there, mm. or putting pattern on there. Yeah. You know, and even though pattern, patterning might be more eye-catching, and um, actually what it'll do is it'll break up that colour of the legs yeah, and yeah, lessen yeah. the impact, so yeah. it'll act as a filter. Um, and, and then the other option it is... It's quite bottom heavy, that skin. model, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Absolutely, you know. So you've got to somehow bring focus to him. I want to see that guy. I always want to see the, the person mm -hmm. in the scene. You know, the character of the of uh, whatever Peter is you doing. What the sculptor was trying to show you. Uh, well, mm -hmm. well, yeah. But who he is, I, I want to look at him. Mm -hmm. I want to look at his trousers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do. I do as well. But I don't. I don't want another man's trousers to be the first thing I focus on. Well, there you go, James. There's some advice for you. Crack yeah. on with but it. It looks good, though. It does look good. He's doing very well. So we'll we'll, we'll come back to that on the whip video and have a yeah, like, see yeah. if he's took anything on board. I hope so. Yes, yeah. it's looking good. Yeah. Cool. All right. We'll move on and see what else we got. So Tom Jennings. A uh, bit of a, a curveball in the competition. Yeah, I think so. It's yeah. interesting he calls it a classic mini because uh, that's probably midway through my hobby journey. That so that classic would be uh, <laughs> twice as old again. He's, he's a young lad, is Tom? Is he? Yeah, he's oh, a young okay. lad. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so he's gone for an old school. Is it Warhammer Dwarf? Yeah, Warhammer yeah. Dwarf. Nice pose. And weirdly, I don't know if you can see what I mean. You know, we mentioned in the last video about focal points. Yeah. When you look at that model, even though it's really busy, you can't help but look at his eyes. Yeah. Just, do you know what I mean? You yeah, just relax. Yeah. You, you just look immediately at, at his eyes. Mm. So the trick for uh, Tom in this instance is going to be how are you going to keep that yeah, on yeah. the model? Yeah. You know, instead of painting it in. So. Uh, I wonder if he's going to go old school with ginger beard and. Ah, uh, well. Uh, Here's a tip for dwarfs. If you use any amount of red and green and a white beard, it's going to look either Christmassy, it's yeah. going to look Christmassy. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's just going to look Christmassy. <laughs> and I'm not, you know, I'm not sold on dwarfs. Yeah, so yeah. Like, <laughs> it's it's going to look Christmassy. Or maybe a little bit too uh, woodlandy, you know, mm. so. We'll see what you do yeah. with that, with, with that advice. Yeah. Set that info um, and see where you go with it. Now, here's the interesting thing. Even though we look straight at the dwarf, we can barely see any of his face. Mm. So again, you've got to make sure that when you paint that model, because it is very busy because of all the strands of hair, paint that model in such a way that keeps the face nice and clear, nice mm. and neat. So you can play with contrast in that way. So you've got all this busyness. You've got these two plates here, and his nose is actually quite simple. Yeah. Keep them that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of go with the business. I'll be interested to see what he does. He's a good painter, Tom. So I'll be interested right. to see what he does with it. Interesting. Yeah. Right, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so we've got a entry from uh, Bartek, and he's gone for a model which you're quite familiar with of late. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is why I've chosen it. I'm just trying to figure out if he's trying to earn any little Brownies. bonus points. Brownie yeah, points. brownie points. Yeah. Um, by going for something you know, it could like. be a risk though. Could be a risk because mm -hmm. uh, you know you're going to take a model I like, and are you going to do it justice, mm -hmm. or are you going to make me not like it? Like we said, are you going to the... switch up the, the, the color theme that you did? Yeah, I mean to be honest, you've got some challenges on this model. Mm -hmm. um, the face is really crisply sculpted, and needs justice doing to it. The robes are really smooth and flat yeah. and large, and if you're going to try any amount of blending. Or even just base coating, are you good enough to get that on nice and neat with no lumps, bumps, mm. streaks? 
etc. Et yeah. There's so, a lot. There's, so a, lot, there's yeah. a lot of different textures on there. I mean, I, look, I looked at yours. Yeah. Um, you added like a little sort of texture effect mm -hmm. on, the, on the cloth and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, trying new cool. things. That's my experiment. Though. Yeah. So um, yeah, Bartek. Um, the gauntlet as well and truly been thrown down. Was be interested to see yeah, how this guy turns out. Yeah. Well, yeah. that model for me when I painted mine, that was very much an experiment in me teaching myself something new because that's yeah. what I like to do is I like to take. Um, new techniques, new styles, other people's techniques and styles mm -hmm. and, and integrate them with the way I work and just expand. So mm -hmm. now that I'm saying you should do that, yeah. you know, you, you follow your follow your heart. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> or whatever the hive mind tells you to do. Yeah, but it's gonna be good. Yeah, nice model. And uh, like I say, yeah, it's, it's you know, I've I I never seen this model before I've seen your picture. Really? So it's the first time that I've seen it. Uh, I don't really follow Gene Steeler cult that much, I've only just got into 40k. It's so. a modern take on an old classic from the uh, very late 80s, early 90s. Right. It's a cool, it is a cool model. It is a cool um, model. So the Gene Steeler Primus on the right with the sword yeah. is also very cool as well. I'd like to repaint the one I've done with that. Uh, I, like, I like the Raygun style of weapons. Yeah, it's top, got, it? Like Flash Gordon-y type. Yeah. Kind yeah. Of, Did you cool. ever watch uh, episode one with Princess Amidala? She kind of had a gun like that. It uh, made a squirty noise. <laughs> laser. <laughs> 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 That's strange ideas, then you see. Um, right, okay, Bartek, we'll leave that with you. And uh, yeah, we'll be interested to see your work in progress picks and see what colour scheme you're going for and see if you take any of Tommy's advice on board. Yay! Okay, next one up is from Dave Millington, and you know what this guy is, right? It's blatantly a beholder, isn't it? I have no clue what that is. That, well, to me, screams out. What was that <laughs> game you used to play the first? Doom. Doom, that was it. That was, that, that's what that was like. Yeah. To me. Yeah, Doom, just purely because uh, let's hope you put beauty in its eyes. And if you just write the word beauty across the middle of it, I'm not sure if I'd be impressed unless you've got really good Oh, you might be impressed. I might not. If you do really good handwriting, you know, and that would be amazing. I literally, that's all I wanted to say about it. Yeah, that. cool. So yeah. he's got his eye on that one, Dave. I've so got my eye uh, on that one, yeah. Yeah, we'll see how you get on with it. <laughs> okay, so Justin Reed has gone a bit. Uh, Got a bit out there with this one. Yeah. Kingdom is it Kingdom Death? Kingdom of Kingdom Death. Death yeah. yeah. I'm wondering what base size he's going to be going for because mm. that model is on a big base. Right. Cool model. Uh yeah, it's like some kind of spectre as we as we know. So you can't know. actually see the model. You can only see <coughs> the cloth around it. Yeah, yeah. Not the model. You know what I mean? You can't see yeah. the creature that it's. Yeah. Depicting. It's uh, some kind of entity in, in its own bed sheets. Yeah. With lanterns, so it's blatantly scared of the dark, where, <laughs> whatever it is. But, but the first thing out of my mouth, other than the, the base size on the model, is uh, when we initially spoke about it, was it's going to be a model of dark and light, mm. I assume. You know, you've got this spooky dude. Yeah. And he's got a load of lanterns. Well, you know, you have to do the model dark if you're going to bring any kind of attention to them lanterns. Yeah. But again, the lanterns can't steal the show outside of the blank space that is his face. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and you really want to be looking at in, in the abyss that yeah, is his yeah. head area. Yeah. That's well, still would really you, what you've you got, got like a couple of choices. Could you go dark in there and sort of frame it, or would you have sort of light? Inside, that's up to him. Mm. I, I, I personally would go dark, yeah. You know, but old school, that's me, old school, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's interesting. So, uh, here's keep, another idea you can cool. actually put something in there to paint the light on, so you're not if you are going to paint it light, you know. So, so then you don't have to rely on the back of the hood, yeah, to, to, to let out some of the color. Is it always being shadowing? If mm. you could put maybe a ball in there, you could paint just like a weird, smoky. Mm. Lighting, mistiness, or something like that. The world's your oyster, Justin. Yeah, Let's see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the next entry we're going to look at is from Mr. Ian Marley. Ian Marley is a legend around these parts. Is he? He comes down every now and again and graces with his presence. Okay. He likes drinking. Never heard of him. He's a good lad. He's a good lad. Um, so, yeah, this is his entry. You are aware of what this is? Yeah. Um, old Beastman model. Um, and actually, one of the coolest models around, I think, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, um, somewhat unexpected. He's got a cool pose to me. He always looked like he should be stood on like the precipice of a cliff or something yeah. like that. You know, I know what you mean. Yeah. Blurry, you know, like that one Uruk high in the two towers that mm. stands on the rock and goes, yeah, 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 yeah. and all the yeah. the heart. Like it looks like he should be doing that, and he's just again, it's quite a simple, understated model. As yeah. busy as it looks to the fur and the studs and blah blah blah, but he's cool. You know, again, just bring focus to his face. Yeah. You know. So get started Ian, he's just started um, a new baby, Has so, it? so it might not have a lot of painting time, That's but uh, we'll be very interested to see how you get on with that Ian. Yeah. Um, so yeah, get your whip picks sent in and we'll have a look at that in the next video definitely. Okay, Okay. so next one is from Filippo Simonini and this is a classic model that I remember from my first entry into the nerd world that is Wargaming. <laughs> right. This is going to be interesting this because... <clears throat> If that model isn't pristinely painted mm. in pure white, you know, and white is one of the tricky colours to yeah. do, you know, so lots of thin layers, letting them dry between every layer fully, you know, because if you don't, that's how you get a lumpy, streaky paint job. Yeah. So he might have set himself a little bit of a challenge here by mm. using the two tone spray because some of them grains may show through. Yeah. You know, and then the other thing is, is any any of the shading that does show through is gonna show through in a grey black right kind of shade, and I don't relate a grey black or a sterile grey to um, Galadriel. You want something like a little a, bit cooler, like a blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Something a little gray. bit more ethereal. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how good his skills are in getting those colours on. Mm. I can see why you do something like that because it kind of gives you where the shades and highlights would be, but mm. you know. Really um, nice model. You, the, the other option is it's just take a picture of where the shades and highlights are. Yes. And you don't need to forget. Mm. But we'll see. You know, we shall see. The hair would be difficult. I painted two of these. Okay. And struggled with the hair. Yeah. Every time. Why? I don't know. Okay. I just was fairly happy with the robes. Yeah. For, for, as you know, as happy as I could be doing white. Mm -hmm. And then did the hair. So what Stripped was, it what was again. Okay, what was, what was it you didn't <laughs> like about the hair? Because if you can figure it out, it can help people out. I, I, was, I was at the stage of my painting life where anything that was remotely brown or blonde just got a wash on it. Uh, and obviously okay. it's, against, Over what it's color? against white. I think it was something like uh, Xandra dust, something like that. Right, okay. That started off and then I was going to wash it and highlight up from there to a much lighter blonde. Right, what but obviously, would you consider a lighter blonde? Because I'd probably mix it with what? Maybe a little shabty bone or something like oh, that. Right, okay, so that'd be keeping it all very uh, pine coloured as opposed to. Some people. It's, it's hard to translate those colours in uh, blonde hair without it looking pretty dead and lifeless. Mm. So you kind of got to get a little bit of yellow in there. Right. But too much yellow in there is going to make things look too cartoony. cartoony yeah. You know, which. The times I'm all right with, so you look at mm. my Ragnar, and nobody goes, "Oh, his hair looks cartoony," but that is pretty much yellow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but that's because I have my style, and I know how to make all those things work mm. together. You know, um, when I do yellow, I'll do Avalon Sunset. I'll shade it down with some light scrag brown if I want something a little bit warmer and richer, mm. or um, Steel Legion Drab if I want yeah. something a little bit more. Um, I'm stroking my beard. I don't know if my beard's <laughs> ginger grey or blonde anymore. You know, <laughs> I'm the same. You know, but you know, so, some a, a little bit more drab and less uh, rich in the yellows. So we'll see though. Yeah, we'll yeah. see. And again, in fact, you've got an opportunity here to um, use that hair to frame the face. I think the face is definitely a focal point on this model. Yeah, well, it's yeah, every, it's every model, and it has to be. Yeah. So if your hair is a stronger colour than the face, then uh, you might struggle. Yeah. Cool. Right, okay, uh, Filippo, make sure you uh, text one out on board and we'll have a look at seeing your work in progress picks soon. Okay, so John Hopwood has entered an undercoated Nurgle's Rotter's Bloater. Yep. You like? Um, I, I like the fact he's put an introspective, if you will. I wonder why is, he, is this... Uh... It's a self-esteem issue going on. Really. <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on. Um, however, yeah, um, I brought this up because you know 
while we've had a lot of repetition of different types of models, any mm -hmm. advice for space marines we may have seen and passed over we can take advice from earlier space marines yeah. and earlier models like that. Um, this guy is an opportunity for special effects, be they slimy, snotty, um, bloody, veiny, rusty, any kind of E on the end of it, this model has an opportunity <laughs> for it, you know, so. Embrace it. Embrace it, yeah. yeah. But again, don't embrace it so much so mm. that all that becomes the, the, the fun of the fair. You still got to see him. Yeah. And then the next thing is, can you do a convincing Blood Bowl pitch on that base? Mm, that'd be cool. You know, because not a lot of people can. Um, here's a top tip for you to do the lines on the pitch if you can get your grass nice and neat and, and short enough I would get a 2p mm -hmm. paint it white and just, just roll, roll it over it. exactly like the, the uh, groundsman would another if free tip yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah yeah, um, yeah I'd, be interested. I'd be interested to see how this turns out and I'd be interested to see now if you take on board about the base yeah that'd be cool so uh, keep us updated John Right, so uh, the last one we'll look at in this video, um, yep. I look forward to touching on some of the others in the next video, but mm -hmm. the last one we're going to talk about today is from David Fear. Uh, he's putting in, it looks like he's putting a handful in, he may as well paint three if he's painting one. Okay, yeah, <laughs> well I mean I, we only really want to see one, don't we? Yeah. And I'd like to see the captain of that <sighs> unit. I mean it's just more painting opportunities. Yeah. Face, you know, but you show me the one you want to show me. Don't, don't, yeah, don't yeah. try and cater to my needs, mm. you know, because it's, it's your passions that create great paint jobs, not mm. mine. Um, um, obviously, my passion creates great paint jobs for, for me from yeah, you, yeah. but painting something you're not into and um, to please somebody else, it's never the right way to do the hobby unless you're kind of being paid for it. Um, but that's another conversation altogether. Yeah. <laughs> so, I've chosen Space Marines mm. in this instance because you can never reiterate enough for me that being neat and crisp and clean with yeah. your base coat shades and highlights as, a, as an initial paint job mm. it's actually really important um, if you want to add weathering uh, or free hands or whatever special effects after that then mm. that creates a great foundation for everything to look good yeah, after yeah. that point um, and also, if you're not a very good painter, not that I'm saying this guy is or isn't, because mm. you know, that's yet to be seen, um, <clears throat> it's good practice. It's better to see a nice, simple, well-painted mm. mini with zero effects if you're not very good at painting than yeah. it is to see somebody who thinks they are better at painting, yeah. does all a bunch of these special effects poorly and actually just makes a mess. Yeah, you know? yeah master the basics. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, master the basics and then move on from there. Master keeping things simple. Yeah. It's yeah. not always easy keeping things simple. It's easy yeah. to say basic. Well, what does basic mean? You know. So if I said simple, you know, like you, you could take a straight line and a circle. Mm. And you go oh, right. Well, draw me a straight line. You might find it's nigh on impossible. Yeah. Draw me a circle. Mm. Again, impossible. So the better you get at those simple shapes, yeah. you know. So the line will be any line highlight around the, the space marine itself. Circle might be doing an ultramarine symbol mm. on the model. If you can get those things nailed, and obviously this applies to any model, then you can get almost anything nailed. Yeah. You know, when people say space marines are you said it earlier, aren't they? You know, space marines are boring. Well, they're mm. not. They're an opportunity to practice some of the hardest stuff there is. Mm. Whereas most people see them as being the easy beginner simple shapes. Actually, mm. you know, so like if you think about weathering on a model, like something with a load of scratches. Well, how is each one of those individual scratches different to the line highlight on a space marine, mm. other than the colour it is and where it's painted? Yeah. Mm. So that. So, you've got your work out for you, David? I think so. Yep. Yeah. Um, make sure you post it in the whip pics. So, I think that is it for this video. Yep. Uh, we've covered a few of the entries. Um, we will be covering more in the halfway point, the work in progress video, cool. and talking about where you're up to, some of the techniques you're using, and getting maybe a few yeah. cheeky little tips. Absolutely. So it's yeah. very uh, hard not to talk about some of the already painted models yeah. in this thread. Yeah. Because uh, I wanted to. Um, but yeah, we're saving that. We'll for, save it. We'll save it. Is it next week? Next week. Uh, just over a week. Oh, yeah. Because cool. it's a four week. Yeah, because it's a four week competition. 
it's just closed this week. Yeah. Yeah, so two weeks. Well, less than two weeks now. Is By it? the time this goes, I'll be a week. Put it on my diary here. Right, here we go. Because yeah. that'll be what we had in that last video. Yeah. Right, then. Go on. Watch this. <laughs> um, yeah. No. Oh, no, here we are. 10, 24th. Oops. The 8th and the 22nd. There you go. That's it. Skills, yeah, two weeks. Nice yeah. one. So it's going to be good. Um, and yeah, come that time, we'll be closing in on the uh, finish line and things will be getting a little bit exciting. I think so. Yeah. So thank you guys for watching. Um, join myself and Tommy again in a couple of weeks. And um, yeah, we'll see you then. Take care. See you later, guys.